for precision cancer medicine to really be successful, you need to profile a patient's tumor and then understand the genetic changes that have happened in that cancer and then predict which therapeutics might benefit that patient the most. And we've done a really good job in the field of profiling patient tumors, but what we don't really know are the functional consequences of an altered cancer genome. So in the cancer dependency map, we are taking uh, cancer models that are grown in vitro in dishes, and we are deeply characterizing those cancer cell lines uh, genomes. But then we go one step further and functionally profile and ask, for every gene in the genome, does that cancer cell line require that gene for survival or not? And so the cancer dependency map essentially allows us to start to realize in an unbiased way what genes might be good to target as therapeutics and how we can map that on to genetic alterations that we would observe in human cancers. We were hoping to see if you lose certain tumor suppressor genes, are there other weaknesses that start arising? And when we do that analysis, one of the top um, priority genes that came out was VPS for A and VPS for B, which were specific weaknesses in uh, tumors that have lost the SMAT4 tumor suppressor gene, which is a tumor suppressor gene that is lost in almost 20 to 30 percent of all cancers. VPS for A and VPS for B are enzymes that are critical in a process in the cell uh, called the endosomal sorting complexes required for transport or the escort machinery. This is a set of proteins that function in the cell that maintain the membranes of the cell. If you lose one of these genes, you can still use the other one. So if you lose B, you can still use A to maintain your membrane biology. But what we now noticed in the cancer dependency map is that uh, cancer cells that have lost certain tumor suppressors lose one of the two uh, of these two genes. And this is where this unique vulner vulnerability comes in, where we can target specifically VPS4A, inhibiting its function or preventing it from functioning, but thereby killing the cell because it has no functional VPS4B. VPS4A and VPS4B are highly related proteins. We call them paralogs. Uh, you can think of them similarly as like fraternal twins. They're not identical to one another, but they're very similar. And so what's interesting to think about as a therapeutic for VPS4 A and B is how similar are they? We view them as fully redundant in terms of their function. So they both can basically take the place for one another, but there are some key structural differences. We're interested in trying to develop inhibitors that would be able to take advantage of some of the more subtle differences in the protein structure between these two very similar proteins that would allow us to target one paralog over the other and therefore give us some selectivity for killing cancer cells over normal cells. And the implications of our study could be large. We have noticed that um, the targeting of VPS for A or VPS for B could be a therapeutic strategy in up to 30 to 33% of all cancers. But in particular, we have noticed that our um, therapeutic strategy could be very uh, potent for pancreatic cancer. Up to 60% of all pancreatic cancers seem to be sensitive to VPS for A or B um, knockout or therapeutic intervention. On top of that, we're also seeing uh, various pediatric cancers, including rhabdomyer sarcoma, in which maybe 5 to 10% of all rhabdomyer sarcoma patients might benefit from a therapeutic strategy targeting the VPS4 proteins. In addition, we see that um, VPS4 a and B could also be interesting targets in various epithelial cancers, including ovarian cancers, um, lung cancers, but also colorectal cancers, because all of these cancers are characterized by tumor suppressor loss of SMAT4 or e cadherin which are the two tumor suppressors that we link to VPS4A and B sensitivity.